So my name is Rob Hegley from the University of Western Ontario, and I'm going to be speaking to you today about the 2016 Canadian Lipid Guidelines, and particularly I'm going to be talking about uh, statin treatment. Statin is the foundation of treatment for lipids. So we've had statins available in Canada for almost 30 years now, and very, very long track record, both in clinical experience and also clinical trials. So this is a very recent meta-analysis showing the uh, benefits of statins with respect to event rate reduction. This was a study done out of the uh, cholesterol trialist group in Oxford. And uh, the, basically it shows that really for every year of statin treatment in the aggregated data from clinical trials, there's a significant reduction in events, uh, even in the first year, or the, that, that first symbol is uh, significant, but then certainly by the se second to fifth year, very, very significant to 20 to 25 percent reduction in major vascular events across all trials. This is really the foundation of why uh, statins are the, um, are, are the recommended treatment in uh, properly selected patients. This slide is a similar meta-analysis from an American group, uh, but very similar message. Uh, along the x-axis is showing the absolute between-group difference in achieved LDL levels in the various clinical trials of statins, and the y-axis showing the reduction in events, and the size of the symbol is the number of events in the study. And again, this very, very same trend. That the, the greater the difference in uh, LDL level, the greater the reduction in events, both in primary and in secondary prevention. It's a highly, highly consistent result. So we know that statins have benefits, and you know, anything good in life that has benefits has risks as well. And so the real uh, challenge clinically is to, is to balance those and then to give the medication or to recommend the medication to the patients who would benefit the most. And those are patients generally who are at higher risk. And here, this is showing death of all causes, so the final piece of the puzzle, so that we know that, that when given to properly selected patients, patients live longer. They walk the surface of the earth for more years after having taken the statin and it's mainly on the upper half of the slide you can see that it's the reduction of cardiovascular events, vascular deaths, and uh, the non-vascular deaths on the bottom half of the slide, so really no significant effect there. And then in altogether about a 10 percent reduction in death of all causes. So it's very compelling evidence. It's one of the few treatments in medicine that we can say that the patients should take it and they're, they're going to be alive, you know, after five or ten years, then they're going to be living longer. So as a result of this, uh, in the new Canadian Lipid Guidelines, we have uh, uh, reformatted our way of thinking of it. There are certain definite statin-indicated conditions. So this would be, for instance, uh, shown on this slide, clinical atherosclerosis, defined there, many, many different uh, clinical manifestations of what clinical atherosclerosis means. Also a separate category for abdominal aortic aneurysm. Separate category for a diabetic. Almost every diabetic, certainly patient with a type 2 diabetes, but even type 1 diabetes, you know, you one would need to, con you know, strongly consider the use of statin drugs. Now we have compelling evidence for chronic kidney disease. And then the fifth category is somebody with a very high level of LDL cholesterol, even without risk factors. So this is really strongly suggestive of a genetic issue, and we know that these patients, over the long term, benefit from having their LDL treated with a statin. Of course, we're always uh, recommending diet and exercise. The drugs work better in the context of a good lifestyle, but uh, the, um, the, the primary benefit from these various clinical trials has been shown with, uh, with drug treatment. Um, also in the guidelines this year, uh, primary prevention conditions, and so there are certain then a uh, little more, little more thinking, a little more clinical, uh, you know, clinical input, clinical consideration involved in the patient who is asymptomatic, but say who is at intermediate risk according to Framingham. So if there's intermediate risk and the LDL is above three and a half, then you would need to consider and then perhaps initiate the discussion with the patient about prevention of cardiovascular disease. 
Um, there are alternate, alternate measurements to the LDL of 3.5, the non-HDL of 4.3, or the ApoB of 1.2. Um, high risk patient, of course, if the patient is even if they're asymptomatic, but if they've got a lot of risk factors, if they're above, uh, say, a Framingham risk of 20%, then uh, one would need to have the, at least the conversation. Ultimately, it, it is the uh, collaborative effort between the physician and the patient, and um, it's ultimately the patient's decision, but this is now what we are uh, recommending in, in terms of primary prevention. So. For the target levels, the target levels uh, you, you've heard are uh, when we've kept the concept of target levels, so two millimoles per liter for high-risk patients, patients in whom the treatment has been uh, initiated, or a 50% reduction in, in LDL levels. So this slide shows the, the efficacy of the various types of statins and say achieving a 50% reduction. So because we, we want to treat our high-risk patients seriously, and if you're going to, you know, initiate treatment, and this becomes important, lifelong treatment for all of the benefits, um, then that 50% uh, re reduction, we're really then talking about atorvastatin and rosuvastatin as the two main types of statins that will allow your patient to achieve that level of reduction. Of course, there's inter-individual variation. There's some patients that can take other statins and will get a 50% or close to 50% reduction but essentially we're talking about uh, moderate to uh, high doses of, uh, of the um, more potent statins. So here, uh, the, you know, the patients are conscious of, and, and, and certainly, uh, I mean, we're all conscious of then the relative risks or benefits versus statins. So, uh, and, and we hear a lot about the risks, but I think on this slide, I think it, it really puts the benefits into context. So this is for, uh, and this again comes from the Oxford group, so this is a, a sort of a calculated scenario. So for 10,000 patients at high risk who have been treated with statins for five years and have had their LDL lowered by two, so let's say they started off at four and they came down to two, so 50% reduction and they hit their target of two. So in those 10,000 patients, you would have prevented 1,000 major cardiovascular events, including deaths. So, so that's, that's actually, you know, uh, if you have to put that in perspective, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's actually a huge benefit. Now, on the right-hand side of the slide, then, are, is, is the trade-off. Anything that has good effects, or pretty much anything in life, anything that has good effects, there is always the risk of side effects. And so then you balance it. So these are then the, the risk, for instance, of muscle weakness, without any enzymatic changes, maybe 50 to 100 patients of those 10,000. Myopathy, I say an elevated the CK with symptoms, maybe five patients. Rhabdomyolysis, so a very serious complication, maybe one patient. There's a lot of talk about new onset of diabetes, probably 50 cases of diabetes, and then hemorrhagic stroke, although that's still controversial, but let's say a few cases of hemorrhagic stroke. So that's the, that's the, uh, that's the trade-off, that's the benefit or that, that's the, the risk to benefit ratio. You've got the benefits of a thousand events prevented versus the, um, the adverse effects. And most of these are actually really, you know, reversible or um, mitigatable with, uh, with, me with uh, medical monitoring. Statin discontinuation is a big problem, a uh, big issue in clinical practice. Uh, basically, once a patient discontinues a statin for whatever reason, usually perceived side effects or concern over side effects. This translates directly into reduced survival. So side effects are the most common reasons that patients discontinue statins. And the, this slide shows then what happens uh, once uh, uh, statin, uh, statin is discontinued for whatever reason. So the, 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 the bottom curve is for, shows the survival in a patient who, in the patient group that stopped taking their statin. And then interestingly, even if the statin is continued in a non-daily dose, so say alternating day dose of something, the, the, uh, as long as they continue taking their statins, their sur survival uh, does not drop. So it's important then if there is the concern that your patient in whom you are concerned about cardiovascular uh, risk reduction is possibly considering stopping their statin, you need to have the conversation, obviously weigh it on a case-by-case -case basis. 
but there is a price to be paid if the statin is, is stopped. Statin intolerance, very, very commonly seen clinically. Uh, these are recommendations then from the uh, Canadian Cardiovascular Society guidelines on what to do if your patient develops statin intolerance. So we recommend not to withhold them on the basis of this small risk of diabetes. We say we evaluate any purported or reported statin-associated symptoms systematically. We say perhaps you can do a bit of a drug holiday, you can reinitiate, you can switch to a different statin, you can try this altered dosing frequency that I mentioned. Anything to, that can help the patient find a tolerated statin-based therapy that works for them. And then the final thing is that there is talk of, you know, has been talk about, you know, vitamins or minerals or supplements to alleviate the symptoms of myalgia that are perceived to be statin associated. We really, we really don't recommend those. We don't think that those, and there's really much good evidence to support that. So final slide, the take home points of statins. So statins have really revolutionized medicine. I, statins became available when I first started practicing, so 30 years ago, and it's, it, I have really watched how they have changed cardiovascular medicine and uh, certainly my practice and, and, and also you know, community medicine and the world at large. So they're proven, they're evidence-based, they're life-saving, they're life-extending, they have saved so many lives. There's 30, 30 years now of real-world experience with them. They are our first-line treatment in our guidelines. We have, of course, as I mentioned, the five statin-eligible conditions, and then the intermediate risk primary prevention, not to mention high-risk primary prevention. There are risks to statins. There are side effects. But the benefits hugely, hugely outweigh the risks in the properly selected patients. We don't say give them to everybody, obviously, but you need to think about it, select the patient, have the discussion with the patient. But once the patient buys in, the benefits for that patient are enormous. And then, of course, once the patient starts on treatment, we need to encourage compliance in order to make sure they get the maximum benefit from their statin. So I wanted to thank you very much for your attention today.